Hello, this is James Cook, Assistant Professor of Social Science at the University of Maine at Augusta. We're considering some aspects of social network design. If you ever have the chance and are really interested in issues of visualizing social networks, I strongly suggest you read a book by Kozo Sugiyama, Graph Drawing and Applications for Software and Knowledge Engineers. And if you're working with information describing relations, you are a knowledge engineer. Uh, it's a 2002 book, and you should see on your screen right now uh, two pages from that, uh, in which he describes different forms of visualization, not all of which involve uh, typical sociograms, and some of which are, are matrices themselves, which can have visualizations in them. Over here on the left, you see his page 14, in which he describes a set of rules uh, for the organization of social networks so that people who are looking at these graphs, uh, another term for a sociogram, can look at them, easily understand what they are, what they represent, and what the patterns are within them. In his 2002 work, he comes up with a, a set of rules that seem pretty basic. Avoid overlapping edges. Avoid crossing edges. Uh, make sure everything's on a straight line. Make sure that the ties between nodes are expressed as straight lines. Make everything symmetrical. Some of these assumptions um, work best when we're dealing with a graph that has a small number of nodes and a small number of relations in between. And one of the interesting things that uh, has happened since 2002 is the explosion of what's called big data on social network relations. As the world has moved more and more onto the internet, uh, it's become possible to mine data on the internet that describes how people are relating to one another in real time. Now, if you're in my analyzing social media course, you should have already installed a piece of software that will allow you to mine significant amounts of this online data uh, regarding social media and to be able to visualize it uh, fairly easily, surprisingly easily, I hope. To access it, um, once you've downloaded NodeXL, hit the Windows Start key, which is a kind of a wavy window icon on your keyboard, and then type node excel and you'll have a node excel template appear under apps click that and you'll be on your way we're going to go through an example today in which some of the rules that sugiyama lays down are bent and we're going to do that using uh, online data now i'm going to hit the node excel tab up at the top and I'm going to go to import. You'll notice over on the left a large number of import options, ways to bring network data into the spreadsheet that uh, contains edge lists, lists of vertices, and sometimes a, a picture of a network. Today we're going to focus on a Twitter search network. They use something that is often called a hashtag to denote a subject. So if I'm talking about giraffes and I write out a sentence and I want people who are looking for information about giraffes to find it, I would put a hashtag, a number sign, before the word giraffe, as I've done right here. And when I do that, uh, it creates an automatic link. And so when people read my 140 character post on giraffes they can click an automatic link that will appear in twitter and people can find all sorts of other posts in twitter about giraffes ones that use that term it's called a hashtag it's like a subject i want to do use a particular subject today one called me politics that's short for main politics Okay, and I am looking for, if we look at the top, a vertex for each person whose recent tweet contains 
the hashtag MEPolitics. I want to add a term in. I want to make it recent. Let's make it within the last week. You'll notice if you look down at the corner of this screen, it will be since, uh, well, now it's the 23rd of September, so let's make that since 2012. Uh, and I believe I'm using the right form, 09. What's 23 minus 7? 16, isn't it? Within the last week. I want to include uh, connections. The connections are that one person can mention another person in a tweet. They do so, I'm going to show this text box, they do so using the at symbol. And if they type in that Twitter account uh, a name, like if your name was Suzanne Davis and that was your account name, it would reference you. It would send a message to you in that 140 characters. Well, I'm interested in that, a mention, also a reply. Uh, as long as you do either, there's going to be a network tie between two Twitter accounts that's generated. I want to see what the structure of relations is in the last week for main politics. I'm going to very carefully, knowing in the past how many people have used main politics as a tag, I'm going to uncheck the limit to 100 people box. Be very careful when you do this. Twitter will only let you grab in so much information about searches uh, within a one hour period. If you try to get too much information at once, it'll make you wait an hour. That's not pleasant for anybody. Uh, I want to add a tweet column describing what the tweets are. I want to expand the URL, which often is in a bit.ly form. I want it to unpack that and tell me what the real underlying URL is a URL is a link to another web page. You can include those in twi Twitter posts as well, called tweets. And you can add statistics columns to the vertices worksheet to find out different sorts of information about who these people are. Now, I have a Twitter account. I've selected this before, and I've already authorized NodeXL to use that account to import Twitter networks. You have to do that. You have to have a Twitter account to use this feature. I'm going to hit OK, and I don't know what's going to happen. So let's see. Am I going to have to wait an hour to, to churn through a couple of cycles and get all the data, or am I going to get it all right away? Let's hit OK and see what happens. It's getting a list of tweets. We have a list down here. If this takes too long, I'll pause the video and we'll return to it. Well, hello. For once, I did have to pause the video because it wasn't quick. It took me about, oh, 15 to 20 minutes to actually run that entire uh, collection of information. But now I do have that Node XL graph of all tweets using the hashtag MEPolitics, short for Main Politics in the last seven days, from the 16th to the 23rd of September. Actual communications that are going on on the web. So let's uh, examine what we've got. We've got a set of vertices. And remember, our vertices only start uh, at, at row 3. So we're going to subtract 2 to get the number of vertices by going all the way down to the bottom. Hit Control and down arrow, and it'll take you down to the last one, which is 258. Subtract 2, and you have 256 vertices. Participating in tweeting behavior, microblogging, 140 character um, uh, text messages, out to the internet regarding main politics. How many connections are there? That is mentions or uh, 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 retweets by those 256 nodes. There are 373 minus 2, 371 of them. 371 mentions and retweets. As you can see here, in this particular example, there are sometimes particular uh, Twitter accounts, particular users, who are really engaged in a heavy conversation, uh, taking up a lot of uh, those edges. For instance, if we look at John Hink, 
who is in the uh, state legislature. I believe I should check that. There are, if I look at count, 58 tweets between him and uh, an account called No Way, or a series of accounts called No Way. Uh, no Way is also engaged in writing on this track to All for Jury. All for Jury writes back to No Way. All for Jury writes back to John Hink. Oh, this is interesting. There's going to be some neat structure. Let's take a look at that structure. I'm going to show graph. Oh, my goodness. Well, there certainly are a lot of dots there. Each of them is a node, a Twitter account. And now you'll notice some of those are what we would call isolates. They're making their own post that is not retweeted and that is not mentioned by another Twitter user. And, you know, perhaps other people read them, but they didn't respond, they didn't reply, there wasn't a conversation. There are other users, on the other hand. Let's find out. Who's that one? Aha! John Hink. I find out because I click that, and all of a sudden, these lines in blue that you see, light blue, are uh, selected. They tell me John Hink is involved. He seems to be a very central figure in the main politics discussion. Why don't I go over and find out for sure who John Hink is? He's a Democratic candidate in 2012 for U.S. Senator. And he is a former, uh, or he is a member of the main House of Representatives. Uh, so I was right about that. I'm glad to hear that. Uh, and apparently he, he was running in 2012 for U.S. Senator from Maine, although clearly he is not. Uh, now a major candidate for Senate. Those are being Angus King, Charlie Summers, and the Democratic candidate is Cynthia Dill. Let's head back to Node XL. Always good to check up these uh, facts. Let's uh, think about how we might restructure this. Now, this was created using the Fruchterman Rheingold uh, procedure for arranging nodes. Uh, Harrell Corin Fast Multiscale is another good one. Each of those is attempting to use uh, a general principle, one that Sugiyama talks about, which is that nodes that are connected to each other should be close to each other, nodes that are not connected to each other should be farther away from each other, and nodes should have some kind of spacing with the most central nodes in the center of the graph. Hmm. Okay, and that's uh, just a different method for doing the same thing. Okay, we have a whole lot of what I suspect are isolates right here. I can select them. Oh, I can try to select just them and pull them out. And here's another set of what I believe are all isolates. Aha, not all of them are. Okay, so I'm going to try to find those individuals. There's one. I'll let him come back in. There's another. Let him come back in. And, oh, that's an isolate. What can I do? I can zoom in right in here. To try to identify those particular nodes that are isolates and that are not isolates. Why am I removing the isolates? Because they really aren't central to the graph. I'm arranging it. And yes, this sometimes can be a bit of a bear of a process, but I'm working through it. I'm moving them, I'm selecting them by dragging, and I'm moving them around until I finally get the few ones here that I believe are connected. Let's see. That's an isolate. That's an isolate not engaged in conversation with other Twitter users. One that is in there that is. Okay, so now I'm going to find that last. I believe there's just one more isolate in there. 
maybe two. There it is. There's another isolate there. And I'm just going to continue on in this process, which is a little bit messy, but that's all right until I find those connected nodes again. And there are more elegant ways of doing this. There are less elegant ways of doing this. I'm doing the quick, relatively quick and dirty version of this. So you can see this takes a few minutes. It's not overly burdensome. Aha! There's the one. Now I'm going to zoom back out. And I'm going to move those few nodes okay, that are isolates over here. I'm going to select them all move them to the corner. I'll move these ones further to the corner. And then I'm going to do something special to them. I'm going to select them all and I'm going to lock them there. I did a right click. Then I'm going to edit selected vertex properties and I am going to look for the field locked and I'm going to say yes. Now I can refresh my graph, because you notice I moved a lot of those other nodes around too, and I'm going to create again the Harold Corn Fast Multiscale picture. Okay, It will do it differently a little bit each time, but each time it will use these design principles. The principles are that uh, individuals who are tied to other individuals are close to one another. They're far away from other ones. There's a nice even spacing, and the most central individuals, the ones that are between others, are going to be laid out in the middle of the network. Okay, well, this is embodying some of the design ideas of Sugiyama, but I want to show you uh, some options that might be a little bit different. You'll notice that this uh, matrix has some trouble in the middle. It's very hard to tell who's interacting with whom in this very busy center. I can't follow those lines, can you? No, I can't. So I'm going to zoom back out. I can also use this slider. And I am going to right click and I'm going to go to Graph Options. I'm going to click on Edges. And breaking one of Sugiyama's rules, I am going to curve the lines. Let's see how that changes the way this graph looks. We're going to move to Bundled in just a second. Now, this is still a little busy. But I'm going to tell you something. In the middle, we can begin to figure out which line is going where because the lines have many different angles. I can follow this curve from one node and trace it back to its origin. I wouldn't have been able to do that before because I wouldn't have been able to follow the suggested curve in the few places where things um, aren't so overlapped. And when you have a lot of nodes and a lot of lines, you will have overlaps. I can clearly do that from here. I can even do that in the, in, in, in the middle here. I can go from one node and trace it back. Clearly, that's not hitting the center, so it must be continuing to go forward, forward, forward. It comes from here. Let's see if I'm right. Yes, I was right. Okay, when I click the node, it shows me all of the associated lines. So I can do better than that even. Let's zoom back out. I can begin to make some different design decisions. Ones that say, you know, let's take a look at all of these nodes over here. 
you'll notice here that excuse me that in the uh, interactions that are made with this node and all these nodes this is clearly a very popular node here the Bangor Daily News we find out it is it's getting a lot of retweets of the tweet Obama donations far outpace Romney's and Maine and you'll notice the Emmy politics hashtag there are a whole bunch that are of other nodes that are doing the same thing couldn't we consider them to be very similar nodes and mightn't we bundle them well, yes, we might. Let's do that. I'm going to right-click here again. I'm going to go back to Graph Options, and I'm going to bundle those. I could bundle them tightly. I could bundle them loosely uh, by selecting an option here. Let's bundle them tightly. Let's see what happens. Boom. Now, all of a sudden, when we look at this uh, network graph, we violated ostensibly uh, Kozo Sugiyama's uh, principle that says you don't do curves, you do nice straight lines, and you make sure they don't touch each other. Well, these ones do touch each other, but they're in bundles, kind of like bundles, of course, behind your computer if you've put them together well, because they are all going to the same place. These are bundles of ties that start in one place and are all heading out to a similar region. It's saying that there's a large volume of ties coming in here to the central node Bangor Daily News. That's useful. Uh, that's a principle of design and uh, it tells us something about the flow of information through this Twitter graph. Okay, next week you're going to get to start to play with this information too. I hope I've whetted your appetite uh, and we'll talk more about it next week. By all means, if you're interested in playing with this information, playing with the Twitter search function, finding out about some connections in discussions of, oh, say, Maine politics, or politics in any other state, or discussions of knitting, go right ahead, have fun, explore. Uh, no one else is doing this right now uh, on the whole internet, most likely for your particular subject, because there are very few people in the world who are looking at Twitter networks in this way in general you could discover a new social fact and you could do it this week. This is one of the exciting things about social network analysis. Okay, go to it.